Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. This week, we answer your letters and preview our new series, Revelation, Unveiling the Visions. We're so glad you've joined us today. I am David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif, and we are doing something a tad bit different. Yes. I say that because we normally do series, but we're in between here. We just finished one. I love doing it on Kings and Kingdoms. There's a lot of political intrigue in this world, and I thought we'd look at political intrigue in the Word and see what we can learn. The Revelation series forthcoming, you're going to love it. You're going to be scared by it, but you're going to love it more than you're going to be scared by it as we look at things unleashed at the ragged edge of time as told by John the Revelator. Now we want to look at questions that you're asking, thus a program dedicated to Q&A and letters. It is. We, have, we get a lot of letters in, and I'm thankful for all of you that send both questions in and comments. We love your positive comments. <laughs> Part of my job, what I do is I help edit both the personal letter and the Levitt letter. So some of you write in and you think, you know, do they read it? Do they not? We read everything that you write in. Some of you love us. Some of you have some questions. And kind of what we're doing today, we'll be doing many different things, is we're going to be going through some of the questions that we get in from viewers. Can I start? Go. I have a question. So you're a policeman. You probably know that. You also are a teacher, but you also have a congregation, correct? Yeah. Do it You're all. in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah, I told my wife, look, I have a multiple personality disorder. <laughs> That's the bad news. The good news is every one of them is making a living. You're a busy man. <laughs> I, um, I've been a, a pastor for many, many years as well and have a, a Messianic Jewish congregation. You know, the policing, I'm on the streets very rare anymore these days. Uh, and I'm as an adjunct professor, uh, part-time in that. I've had careers in both. Um, but uh, pastoral work is really in my heart. And the congregation's unique. Uh, we meet on the Sabbath. We uh, place a premium on retaining Jewish experience and expression. This is a television program that's dedicated to that. But people that come to Sar Shalom Congregation, Prince of Peace in English in Arlington, they don't want to just learn about something intellectually, but want to participate in developing a community. Uh, that is Jewish on the one hand and Jesus centered on the other. And we're kind of wrestling with the question of what that looks like. And I have the opportunity to pastor many fine people. I do have a question about that. What percentage do you have that are Messianic Jewish believers and what percentage are Christians that are interested in Judaism? Maybe we're looking at about 30%. A lot of these Messianic congregations, Jewish, Jewish, yes. And, And that would be high as compared to a number of Messianic Jewish congregations are constituted by people that are viewers like you that watch a program like this. You just love the Jewish roots of the Jesus story and people come to, to galvanize their enthusiasms and participate in a community around that. I, I love it when we go to Israel on tour and we observe worship in Israel. Do you have that kind of worship, Hebrew worship at yes, your congregation? Yes, it's that genre, it's that type. And uh, the, the, the music is very Hebraic. Mm-hmm. The uh, festivals that are celebrated, are Hebraic. I don't want to be uh, casting aspersions on classical Christian holidays, Christmas and Easter, etc. But the kind of people that come to a congregation like this are more predisposed to want to celebrate the Jewish feasts and they love that Semitic flavor in music. I love it. They think that, 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 well, they want to participate in a revival of that. If Mm -hmm. you look at when the Jesus story all began, these were Jews and non-Jewish people who joined in it that that it was a Jewish world, the more so. That fell off the cliff. And now there's this looking to recover that. It's scripture put to music. I love that. Yep. Beautiful. I just want to jump in real quick for all our viewers. If you are not aware, we have two periodical, should I say, publications that go out monthly. One is called The Personal Letter. It's a personal message from us, and there's tour info and that kind of thing. And then we also have The Levitt Letter. Both every month go out. The Levitt Letter is chock full of current information of what is happening in Israel. I write a monthly article, and usually it's kind of a, a, a devotional per se, Mm -hmm. that is uh, kind of zoomed in on the Jewish people, of course, and Israel. 
And you mentioned Hebrew worship. Sarah Lieberman is uh, a writer that we've had new in the Levitt Letter, if you've noticed her articles. She's a boots on the ground worship leader, Messianic worship leader in Israel, up in the Galilee. Yes. And she now is going to be writing the personal letter. So she's starting in July. Tony Derrick has done a wonderful job keeping that peri periodical going. And now Sarah's taking over. And Oh, she's just, she's fantastic. You will love her. So if you are not signed up to receive both of those newsletters, please do so. Uh, there's a wealth of information in there, but we're, we can go right back to Hebrew worship. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have some questions we that do. have come in from all of you viewers, and we're going to go over some of those. We're going to be talking about the upcoming new series, but to tie right, in, front on, have I rehearsed ahead. these questions with you? No, no, this is just, I said, I don't want to do this scripted. No. Let's just do it extemporaneous. And we do get a lot of letters. So there's some great questions. Yeah. And if you can settle with, for, I don't know as an answer, we'll get along just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I have that answer for a lot of things. Do you want to read yours first? Sure, I love some this. some questions that we as Gentiles wonder sometimes too. So you ready? Do you need your readers, okay, here's Grandpa? Here's number one. I think I got it. <laughs> Is it possible to follow the law? If not, why did God give us the law? That's a hefty. Well, when you say us, if you look at the Hebrew Bible, the Torah, the five books of Moses was given, it's a covenant contract between uh, God and the people whom he rescued out of Egypt, people that we call Jews today. And it's... Uh, it's a contract that includes a number of things, quite frankly. It includes, uh, there's the ceremonial stuff relative to the sanctuary, but there's civil law, there's criminal law. It's a constitution for living. It really can't be kept anyways, because we don't live in that culture. We don't live in a theocracy. We live in a democracy. And it's impossible to keep all the particulars of it anyway, even if you wanted to. Um, that's my knee-jerk response there to that. There are a lot of laws. <laughs> for there sure. is. And, and, you know, and listen, I have training as a, as a police officer, the penal code, the traffic code, the code of criminal procedures, uh, civil codes, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot that, that we regulate life with, the traffic code, speeding and the like. Mm. If you look at the Torah, it deals with regulating life in that world, and it's another culture, it's another economy. It's not going to be lived out today in Toto. It can't be. We have so much more coming up in this program. Stay with us. Our resource this week, the series Kings and Kingdoms. These eight programs examine the rulers of ancient Israel and Judah because within their stories, we find lessons of godly leadership and principles we can observe today, even in our political leaders. Get this series for yourself or to share with friends by contacting us and asking for the DVD series, Kings and Kingdoms. If you're thinking about visiting the Holy Land, come on a Zola tour, where the scriptures come to life as you get teaching from a messianic perspective. Our spring tour goes to Israel and Petra. In the fall, you can add a cruise of Greece and Ephesus. Come to Israel. See the Jewish roots of your faith. Call us at 1-800-WONDERS or click on the levitt.com slash tour info. We really are thankful to be at this desk today. There's been a lot going on in the last few months with this pandemic. I'm sure it has with you. We, for a living, we speak to big groups. 
and we haven't been able to do that, but it's starting to feel in like your worship it's leader, opening up a little bit. In churches, groups of 50 or more, right? A lot of things have changed. And do you want me to say it or do you want to bring it up? We've had some changes with our little family. Yes. Okay, I've called it COVID <laughs> hair. COVID hair. A lot of you, I mean, there are a lot of memes and funny things on social media <laughs> yes. talking about the hair growth. So I'm a grandma, your grandpa, yes. your papa, I'm Gigi. Mm -hmm. So you grew your, out, your hair out too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're um, changing and evolving in the hair and your hair looks wonderful too. Thank you very much. Took a lot <laughs> to get it ready for the program. That's <laughs> COVID hair, people. <laughs> but uh, no, we're thankful that this is open. I mean, we're a little, we're distancing a little bit. We're trying to be safe and so trying to be wise. I, th I thought maybe it was something personal that you the were. The hair. Uh, the hair. No, I'm we, kidding. We took your temperature today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're all good. <laughs> we're practicing safety yes. as we as we tape this program. But we wanted to bring an extra continuation from our first segment. Some viewer letters questions. that we get in. Some questions. Are you ready? Fire away. Drum, 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 drum. Professor, are you ready? Go for you it. Have, okay. you, wait, I love wait, this. Papa, do you need your readers? I think I'm good. I, I love this question for many of us, what makes one Jewish by blood or by faith? It's a biggie. Well, the, the Hebrew people, the word Ibru etymologically comes from a word meaning beyond the river, harks to Avraham, Abram, who came from Ur of Chaldea, which is modern Kuwait, went on a journey and he sired, you know, there's Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had 12 sons. And those that are descended from them are known as the Hebrew people a common term is Jew today, generally speaking. So in a biological sense, there are the Hebrew people, but when you read Rabbi Paul in the New Testament, AKA Apostle Paul, he gives voice to the fact that people of non-Jewish extract who have come to faith in Israel's Messiah are in some sense grafted into the people. So is it one or the other? There's a sense in which now, again, through Israel's Messiah, people participate in the Jewish experience in some sense. When we started hosting this program three years ago, we got excited because we thought Kirsten might have some Jewish blood in her and even did the testing. And I don't think... I don't. No, you don't. I don't. But we, she thought she did. But here's a question, too, and this is kind of a biggie for a lot of our viewers. Uh, we've heard of Christians that say they're Messianic, and then Jewish Messianic people say, no way, that's us. Like, you can't be Messianic if you're not... Jewish. Is that, is that something you well, run into? At I, your... I can't control what people say and think, just what, what, what I say and think. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in the marketplace of religious ideas, people have stuff floating around in their mind. Now, if you look at the, the Messianic Jewish experience, uh, I, can't, I define it, a Messianic Jew is someone who wants to participate in the Jesus story and the Jewish story mm -hmm. in, some, in some sense together. Now, there are individuals of non-Jewish extract, many who want to participate in the Jewish Jesus-related experience. Us. And uh, so um, I don't care what you call it. I'm just glad to have all the friends. I mean, if you look at the Newer Testament, it's, this is a, you know, God is an equal opportunity employer open to people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. But there are people that are Hebrew people that are from that group genetically. Right, and it's interesting because um, right before we began with, started with the program, we were in Israel, and uh, this is, if you are Christian and you're learning all about the Messianic world and Judaism, sometimes there's some terms that we get off. And remember the, the gal at the hotel in Jerusalem, she, you, you said, I'm, uh, she was Jewish, oh, yes. and you said, I'm so glad you're a Christian now, and she goes, I am not a Christian, I'm a Jewish believer in Messiah. Yeah, people, so it can get a little sticky. People come up to me and they say, well, they'll ask me, how long have I been a converted Jew? And I tell them, I'm not a converted Jew, I'm a converted sinner, and it's not a sin to be a Jew. Um, Jewish people accept the Lord, and part of this whole Messianic Jewish experience is we want to remain in our own culture, uh, in part because we feel that and love that culture, in part, too, that... We don't want Jewish people to think that if you accept Israel's Messiah, you're no longer Israel's people. That's kind of stupid at one level. And the perception is, listen, you know, you used to be Jewish, now you're a Catholic. You used to be Jewish, now you're a Baptist. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and, uh, but uh, rather than even speak in those terms with that paradigm, I like to say I was born and raised Jewish, I accepted Israel's Messiah, and now I'm a Messianic Jew. 
That was very interesting, Differ differentiating. That's a big word. I should probably stay away from those. Um, those have, that have the well, that's DNA. that's a lot of syllables for blonde, <laughs> you know, so. All right, I'm blonde now, right? <laughs> differentiating the uh, faith or religion versus the DNA line. That is very interesting, because it's, it's, it's something that is unique for Jewish people. Yes, and what's, what's interesting, by the way, is, you know, it used to be, historically, people wanted to disparage Jews, you know, the Jews are bad people, the way it's perceived in Christianity, but now there are many people that are born and raised Christians that want to discover to Jewish roots, and there's an interest in, in blood tests and the like, and uh, uh, to DNA in order to check heritage, that there's this wanting to participate. That's why people go to Messianic congregations mm -hmm. that are non-Jewish extract. That's why you, God bless you, so not only watch a program like this, but support it financially because you want this to exist. I love it. You know, our son lived in Jerusalem for three years. I know, I know. He wasn't trying to become Jewish. Jewish. Right. But um, God placed him there to, to work and, Jewish heart. and live, and he loved A it. A Jewish heart, pun that's intended. Right. That's right, Pun intended. And that's what many of our viewers have, obviously, that they're watching this program, Our Jewish Roots. Right. We, we want to be you. We no, no, be... no, be you. <laughs> be you. Um, but we're, I'm saying that people that watch, we're so thankful for the insight that you bring, and there's more coming up in our program. Well, you're kind, thank you. So many more questions here, but on our next segment, we're gonna be talking about our new series, Revelation. Stay tuned. Our resource this week, the series Kings and Kingdoms. These eight programs examine the rulers of ancient Israel and Judah because within their stories, we find lessons of godly leadership and principles we can observe today, even in our political leaders. Get this series for yourself or to share with friends by contacting us and asking for the DVD series, Kings and Kingdoms. If you only watch us on television, you are missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. You can sign up for a tour of Israel and Petra or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Not only on this program, but you can connect with us in many ways. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, thank you for joining us on that. You're asking questions today, and on Facebook, you're, we give you that chance to do that. That, and also, uh, some of you aren't even on social media, and we understand that. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, you can still write to us. True. You can go on our website, there's the address, there's even little like boards that you can send in questions. So we have some questions for you, kind of about your new series, Revelation Unveiling the Visions. It's a brand new series, right? Mm -hmm. Coming up. It's gonna be a good one. You ready, Papa? You need your readers? Okay, I believe this is a question <laughs> about our new series. Mm -hmm. And she asks this from a sweet, sweet spirit. So are you ready? She even have, said that. Have any of the seals opened yet? She could ask it from a mean spirit, by the way, <laughs> that people are entitled to ask their questions and they're entitled as well to not agree with my answers. Just because I just say Yeshua instead of Jesus doesn't mean I'm an expert on all things. And I understand myself to be a student of the Bible, not an expert in it. But mm. even the question about opening the seals, it presupposes uh, a more sophisticated understanding of the literature that she has. She's familiar with the fact that there's a scroll and there's different seals and they open up and give voice to these things that are unleashed upon planet Earth. And given that we find ourselves today amidst the turbulence of trying times, people wonder if the times uh, we're in today hark to the time that's noted yesterday in the literature. Uh, it could minimally be some kind of antecedent to it. Certainly we see a world that's, that, that has woes unleashed upon it. So uh, in that sense, yes, but keep in mind it's been like that since the dawn of creation. Right. I mean, right from Eden, you know, they get, they, they, get, they get kicked out of Eden and brother kills brother, there's sexual impropriety, infidelity in the marriage, war, destruction of the earth, and it doesn't get a whole lot better. Yeah, we both grew up in the church, and I don't know about you, but I don't remember hearing a lot of sermons about this subject. About no. Revelation. Yeah. Right, well, it's, well, it's a tough one. Partly because for a book that's called Revelation, it's not very revealing. It's about as clear as mud to many, mm -hmm. I get it, because they don't look at the literature 
uh, through a lens of Jewish literature and understanding in century one when it was written. And so people stay away from that reason. Another reason, principally, is people have so much bad news in their life, people want to go to church to get some good news. Right. And you have to sift through the literature to land on it here. And well, what I do love, I, I'm jumping in on you, what I love about the series that you've done, because we've already viewed it, is there's hard time, there's famine, there's plague, but then there's a vision of heaven. So it's something like what we've been walking through, this whole coronavirus, that in the midst of hard times, we need that hope. Right. We've got to have that, and that's coming up in the new series. And to that point, I think the, the first to hear and embrace the literature of the book Revelation were those who uh, found themselves pressed amidst the turbulence of trying times, and what they gathered from it was that the seals were opened, the seals were unleashed to that question. That is, they found themselves amidst turbulent times, but they saw hope in the midst of it. So Hope, hope, hope. What else you got? We have more questions for you, but first... Oh, we have a preview of Dr. Seif's new series, Revelation, Unveiling the Visions. The book of Revelation has been a go-to source for a long, long time. Individuals trying to look at what's happening in the news on the one hand and to look at what's happening in the good news on the other to see if there's a correlation. Well, here we want to peek behind the veil and look at the visions noted in the apocalypse. So our author is here in the Aegean Sea. He sees that in heaven, he envisions a scourge on the earth, but he sees uh, 12,000 from each tribe that, that are faithful to the Lord. Many people think, you know, all oh, the Jews, you know, rejected Jesus, Jesus rejected the Jews, that's the end of that. No, there is this resurgence, this revival. You know, the uh, word revelation from Apocalypsis harks to unveiling being able to see it for what it really is. And the author of Revelation looks at a, a sin-soaked world, and uh, he wants to see it for what it really is. He sees uh, the believers being oppressed in that world, and he gives voice to their eventual triumph, finally and fully, and we're looking at it now. We're told in verse five, no longer is there darkness. People will have no need for lamps, for maneuvers, for sunlights for the Lord God will shine on them and they shall reign forever and ever with him. We are excited to bring you this new series on Revelation and we just have to say that we could not do any of this without your support. We just want to thank you for that. David and I, we're in church work, and yes. that's been our whole livelihood for our lives. And I honestly thought that when everything was closed, churches were closed, people couldn't gather together, that giving would be down, would just plummet. But actually, the church has risen up, and, and churches are doing well. I mean, actually, we survived. They yes. survived the COVID-19 situation because of all you givers, and you've helped sustain this ministry also. Do we need your help? Yes, but we, we're still here. That's amazing, right, that we're still on the air and have money to yeah, pay and, for television. You know, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, it's... Um the, the gospel story has been told for 2,000 years, and a lot worse has been thrown at it. Personally, uh, when I think of money, I don't even think of money. I think of you, and I say that because money is just life with a number put on it. If someone makes $20 an hour and they put $20 bill to support something in a ministry, they've given an hour of them to support it. There's a way that we monetize our own extension of love and affection. And that's the way the game is played. And if in your heart of hearts, you do find something in you that resonates with something like this, please put uh, your money where your heart is and help us to get this story out so others might cultivate an appreciation for it. 
We live in a world today where many people are cynical about Christian television and about the church and the gospel, and we want to march to the tune of a different drummer and win fans back again to the Jesus story. And we think that looking at the good news through the eyes of the Jews is a worthy story to bring credibility to the message, and I believe we have credibility in our messengers. If you think so, too, please help us tell the story. Make a gracious contribution today. That's right. So you have your professor hat on. <laughs> of, of yours question here that I think will relate to our new series in Revelation. You ready? Yeah. 666. You think that relates? Right? What does that right. have to do with the story? <laughs> What's the question? You just gave me six numbers. Well, they, numbers. they said, yeah, what is the symbol? Is it a literal 666? This mark of the beast is just kind of that that cloud over Revelation. People, well, here's the thing, how it ties into coronavirus. We've heard so much and we've watched the news. People think that you're gonna get an implant chip to combat this virus. Is Are we in the end days and we're getting the mark? Well, I like to experience it the way they would have in the first century. They're not thinking of computer chips uh, because nothing like that exists. Uh, they do understand themselves to be in the, amidst the turbulence of trying times when they read the document, and they understand there is this nefarious person that is inherently evil, referred to as the Antichrist in Johannine literature, uh, referred to as the beast, different names in the Bible to speak to this person. Uh, there are other names given in the literature. And this person's will is incarnated and fleshed in the person uh, of this evil personality who imposed himself with this particular mark, this beast identified with 666. I think uh, in century one, when they read this, they would have thought of the Roman emperor at the time, that is this inherently evil personality given over to debauch debauchery and destruction. I, I don't think it's beyond the pale of reason to bring that forward and say there will be someone at the ragged edge of time who similarly has a way of controlling and imposing and uh, I think that's what's at play in the literature. It's, it's both worlds, it's future and it's first century. I'll and I just wanna that. say, that is what sets this program apart. We bring you the good news through the eyes of the Jews and Dr. Seifer, your genius at opening up this book, Revelation, and saying, but we need to look at it through Jewish eyes and first century eyes. Well, also. you're kind to say that. I don't see myself as a genius, quite honestly, as a we student. Do. Well, you're sweet to say it, but there's so much that I don't know. Believe me, that's true. But it's coming up next week, brand well, new series. Yes, it is. Looking forward to it. Yes, and thank you for going with us on the journey and helping us to go there. As you go now, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store. There, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to our Jewish roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.